Hi my friend, welcome to Emma's Corner. Um, I've had a few thoughts lately and I wanted to share them with you. I'm Emma Rowena, I'm an intuitive, a creative, a musician, performer, healer, a meditation guide, spiritual guide, a philosopher if you like. I was just thinking, I might just call myself a philosopher because I keep philosophizing about life. I'm also an emerging author. I'm about to um, launch my first book. So, and in relation to that, lots of things come up. I reflect on a lot of things that have been going on in my life. And the book is about my journey from fear to empowerment. Um, and, you know, life happens, things happen in life. You have to face obstacles and challenges no matter how spiritual or how uplifted you think you are there are going to be things that you have to relate to and as this happens i reflect on what has this journey taught me on how to manage obstacles how to manage challenges how to mm, go through the dark spots and and rise again or come out in the sunshine if you like and I did a beautiful meditation today and I'm going to um, record it and put it out uh, for you later. But I did it for myself first. And often when I, I meditate, it's like an intuitive reading, if you like, for myself. I follow the impulses, um, often follow what I need and I tune in. And today I needed connection. I needed connection to the healing light. So I opened up to it. And I listened and as it happens, I realized, wow, it's just about receiving. It's about allowing the light, the warmth to enter my body, to enter my life. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about. Not necessarily about the light and the healing, because that will happen in the meditation, but about the curiosity, about the exploration, the inquisitiveness that you allow for when you start to wander and this is also a topic in my book and it's brought um, forward a lot of reflection around this writing the book has has brought this forward and uh, some of the things that i do reflect upon is and i've i've learned a lot and i'm learning from and i'm trying to practice myself as often as I can, and especially when I get stuck, as we all do. I mean, we're humans. This life is messy, it's complicated, it's uh, disturbing at times. And, and learning to come home, learning to come back to yourself and whew, connect to who you are and ah, connect to, to God or the source or the universe or whatever it is that you want to believe in or you believe in or you feel to be your truth. It's true. If it feels true to you, it'll be true to you. And that's perfect. But learning to come back to that, discovering how you can do that, even when it seems impossible, is a beautiful, beautiful gift. And I've discovered that the main tool that helps me and a lot of people to do this is curiosity. What is this sensation? What is this heaviness? Where is it in the body? What does it feel like? Why? We can't always go to the why because sometimes we, we reject the why or we ignore it in fear of, of discovering that it's too hard to face, right? Trauma. We sometimes, or very often, escape the trauma, escape the root of our pain. But discovering what the pain really is, what it feels like, how it flows or doesn't flow, how it gets stuck in the body, where in the body it gets stuck. Now, I've had some pain in my hips and my lower back lately, and I've had a few revelations these last few days. I worked to soften the hips and the lower back, and I had some old trauma coming up. I started opening up to the light, letting it in, the way I've practiced and learned to do is I opened up to my intuitive skills and to my psychic skills if you like my my ability to work with energy and healing we all have it but I chose to access it right so it's a choice it was a choice but then I sought guidance for it and as I did that um, 
I learned a few things. I learned a few tools and, and some of them are in my book as well. So if you're interested, contact me and we'll, and we'll get you the book or, you, or we can talk about it. But um, what I learned was to listen, to explore. I often do readings for other people and I, I don't do predictions, future readings, sort of that sort of reading. It's more of an energy healing. And what I learned, and we were taught very thoroughly in this by, by Princess Martha and her friend um, uh, Elizabeth Nord Eng, who had a school here in Oslo, and they taught us to listen. And they had two beautiful teachers who guided us through these uh, reading courses. And they taught us to ask questions. What does this image mean? What does this sensation? In a reading, I get images and I work with the images and there's lots of information in that and it comes through. And with the information, you start moving the energy. As you start to observe the information, you start moving the energy. So too today and these last few days regarding my hips. Now we all probably have some tension and pain in our bodies unless you're completely free, which I don't think there's any human being who will be possibly the Dalai Lama maybe, I don't know. But we all store tension and pain in our bodies. This is part of our survival. Now we can release it. Once the trauma is over, we can learn to release it and we can focus on where is the pain? Where is the tension? Be curious, be amused. I call curiosity a superpower. Why? Because it allows you to step back a little bit and listen. I wonder where is that pain? Why is it stuck there? Ha! Huh. Is it possible to release it? And then in a meditation today, like a reading, I observed what happened when I asked for the connection and the healing. And I observed that it was hard for me to receive the healing. Sometimes it's easier, but this time it was a little hard because there was something in me that I was not willing to release. And I sat there and the more resistance there was, the more I focused on it because I've learned that this resistance is probably there because I'm afraid, right? I'm afraid of opening up to it. So I allowed myself to sit with it until I could let it go. Now, how do you do this? Well, I sat in a med meditation. I imagined a light coming down. And we'll do it in the, re in the meditation uh, recording later. And I allowed it to flow through like the sun coming over the horizon in the sunrise. That's the image that came. And I felt the warmth and I felt it starting to soften my head, my brain, my mind, my face, soften my body bit by bit. And then eventually it reached my hips and it started to release. And that's when I started to heal from a trauma. I started to release. I felt a shivering and then eventually some tears came and I started to open up and my hips and my back is so much better today. I could move around, I could bend in a gentle soft way that I haven't been able to do for a while because I've been pushing and pushing and holding on to this trauma and trying to be clever and trying to handle it. We try to handle things, we try to fix things. And we're told that we create our own lives and that the pains are our own emotions. And so we try to be clever at fixing it sometimes, or at least I do. But then allowing it to soften, opening up to whatever it is out there that is bigger than me, that has that power and that love and that beauty. Praying, for instance, is a way of doing this and allowing the gift to come through. Now, I had a, uh, an experience, I watched a film recently with my son about uh, Aretha Franklin and she had some heavy trauma and she um, got stuck in, the, in what she called the demon and then uh, I think it was James Brown who told her, it's not your demon, it's your pain. And she was about to record these um, gospels in her church. And there's a film about that actual recording. 
and she was terrified of her demon coming out while the cameras were on her. And he said, you're safe here. Give it over to God. Now, she had a strong belief in God and she had a strong uh, Christian belief. Whatever belief you, belief you have, you can give it over to something greater. Give it over to the healing, to the light. Receive that grace, if you like. Allow it to seep through you. And be curious, where is it going? Ah, it's stopping. And when your mind starts to wander, that can also be a resistance. And that's all right. Because if you have trauma, it's stuck in your body for a reason. It's been very painful for you and you can heal it, but there will be resistance in trying to bring it out into the light because you're not used to it and because the memory of the trauma might be very strong or you're afraid of the memory and you're afraid the trauma will define you or repeat itself to you. Now, my experience is that if you allow the healing, it will release. It will let go. You don't have to go digging into the trauma. The trauma is finished. You can allow it to release. You can allow yourself to come back to your natural self, which is free flow, love, excitement, joy. That is, I believe, our nature. As souls, as eternal beings. And we've manifested ourselves through these bodies and there's tension because there's a different vibration, whatever you want to call it. But we experience life through these bodies. And when things become too heavy for us, we store it in the bodies, but we have the ability to let it go and come back to that free flow. Little by little, maybe, sometimes in big gusts of release or healing, but it's possible. And again, curiosity what's this story done to you and what can you do today where are you today why is the resistance there or don't even ask the why because then you start analyzing don't do that um, I advise you not to do that because we do that so much and I find that the analyzing the analytical mind does not heal it complicates things what helps is listening, opening up, being curious, wondering, huh, oh, there's a shivering. What does that mean? Maybe that's some energy shifting, it usually is. When I was doing this meditation, there was a lot of shivering all over my body. And I know that that is when my energy, my tension start to shift. I don't have to understand it. I just know, I experienced it before and I recognize it. And then tears as well. When you start crying it out, you're releasing something. And allow it to be released and acknowledge and be grateful for it and curious. Goodness, I didn't know that's what it felt like to release something. Maybe you didn't. Maybe there's something else happening in your body that, you, that feels unusual to you, but that you can recognize as some sort of a shift. Be curious, it's your superpower. It allows you to listen. Now, I will bring this a step further before I finish. Curiosity also helps you to relate to other people. I, my book is a, a bit of a testimony for my son. It's like a journal, but I've made it into a letter for my son to read when he comes of age and if he's interested in not only my story, which ultimately is also part of his story, but but the teachings that I've been given and the experiences that I've been given and shown and the awarenesses that I have embraced on my journey which relate to my healing and my my uh, uplifting journey if you like my becoming aware of the greater picture now in this book I also talk about how we are connected and how our Curiosity can help us to listen to other people. And I learned this very much. I discovered, rediscovered this as I wrote the book, how listening to my son is so important for me to help him, to guide him. Not telling him what to do, but listening. Being a parent involves 
somebody said being a parent is a growing experience. So when you're a parent, you grow or you resist growth and there will be tension. It's not only the parents' fault. I mean, things happen around you all the time. So I'm not putting blame or anything. I'm just trying to bring a little bit of awareness of the opportunity that you have as a parent or in any relation to grow. And growing for me entails listening to yourself, as I just explained in your healing journey or whatever it is you're doing, whatever emotion you're undergoing. Be curious, what is it? What, what's this a sign of? Good emotion is a sign you're in a good place. A disturbing emotion, tension is a sign that maybe you're a little bit untrue to yourself. But listening to another person, for instance, as a mother for me, listening to my son, I am able to respond better. Now, I mean listening. I don't mean listen to what he says and then say what you think. I mean listening to what he says, really says. What's his story here? What's his perspective? And what's he looking for from me? What does he need? It's not always apparent. But if you listen and if you're curious and even ask questions, is that what you mean? And this goes for any relationship. What is that you're saying there? Ha. Huh. So do you mean to say, or do you mean to ask this or that? Be curious. And when you're curious in a conversation with another person, that person will feel seen and heard and will be able to make themselves um, understood in a clear way. But it also allows you to understand yourself and the other person. It allows you to understand your reactions. It gives you time. It allows you to step back a little bit and be curious about yourself. So instead of reacting instantly, being a little bit curious, practicing curiosity, what's being said here? Hmm, I wonder. That gives you the time and the space to reflect intuitively, I would say, because the analytic mind often comes in with a defense and wants to tell you right away. I mean, I know this. I, I tend to break people off with my ideas when they bring up something that, that I can relate to rather than listening. So this is a very, very personal experience. But listening and being curious opens up your awareness to yourself and to the other person. So this long conversation today was my invitation to you to investigate curiosity in your life. And please let me know what your experiences are. Does this help you in any way? And how can you use curiosity in your life to improve whatever situation you're in, if it needs improving, to help your growth, help your relationships, to help your healing, or simply discover a new aspect of yourself. What does it sound like? What does it feel like to be curious? Try it. I'd love to hear from you. I hope to see you again. Many blessings. Bye-bye.